All right, praise the Lord and let the church say amen. I hope everybody's doing well on this beautiful, beautiful blessed day. It's always a blessing just to wake up and that I'm on top of the ground and I'm not under the ground. God bless you. I want to come back in this video and respond with my sister Lisa. God bless you and Big Mike. Hope y'all doing well. Uh, especially on your old video you did about uh, what is marriage and being single. And I guess this will be like a uh, part three. And I enjoyed that video on, on being single because I can relate. Um, and we all know it's got its ups and downs. But I'm not going to deal with the singleness in this video. I want to I want to come uh, talk about marriage for a little bit. But look at it from a different angle. And I also let you know this is another reason why a lot of people do shack up. And we, like I say, we're looking at it from another angle. And we all, you know, we got the other videos on there to look at it, you know, the way God ordained it. But a lot of people was taught also that they didn't need to be married because who you slept with was who you slept with. And that was your wife. So why even get married? And this is why a lot of people shack up also. Now, the reason I say that, because, you know, Sister Lisa, everything goes back to the beginning. Let's rewind back to the beginning for a moment and look at Adam and Eve. You got to go back to the beginning. And this is what was so amazing about me. Adam, with God, when he sent, when he put Adam to sleep, gave him his help me, when we all know that was Eve. Notice the Bible say he had relations. Notice the Bible say, and he knew his wife. And notice that there was no ceremony. You know why? Because when God puts you with somebody, no man, no woman should be able to split it up. But we allow people to split it up. And sometimes we want it to split up because we do what we want to do. And then we pray for God to bail us out. So the ceremony was man-made. That's why, notice Adam didn't have a choice. God gave him Eve. He didn't have no choice to pick nobody else, really. He said, that's going to be your wife. And he woke up, <laughs> and there was his wife, Eve. He couldn't pick her. He couldn't pick that. Because if we just be honest with everybody, we have slept around with, brothers and sisters. See, when you look at the Old Testament especially, this is why a covenant is so important. That's why I always tell people, yes, when you get deep with it, that's a covenant. And you shouldn't let nobody break up your covenant. And then the thing is, we hook up with who we want to hook up with. And we make all kind of mistakes. But we're going to make mistakes anyway. But notice God didn't really create that marriage ceremony and all that other stuff. Because that's man-made. Because you can you can get a man, a preacher to say, I do. You know, get y'all to say, I do. But really, a lot of people saying, I do. And they really be meaning to say, I don't. Because they don't take their vows seriously. They only want to take it for the better, but not the for worse. And when the for worse come in, they're everybody ready to get divorced. And we don't take God's covenant that serious. This is why it's not too many people married to this day. It's only a, a, a few people that can really stay stay married. And that's why I say I know a lot of people that have been shacking up for 20 years. And they'll tell you they're not going to never get married. They'll say, that is my wife. And they, they, they throw all kind of scriptures at you. So really, Sister Lisa, when you ask that question also... I look at that as God putting you together. And you, you say, really, what does the paper do? Really, what does the paper do? Because if you got, see, this is the thing, men, women, if we would be the children of God the way we suppose, we would stay together. Problem is, we just doing what we want to do. And then we get to this point where we want to be sorry, lazy. I'm going to do what I want to do. Forget about my wife. Or I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Forget about my husband. There ain't no equalness. It ain't no respect. There is no respect toward each other no more. That's why I love when I look at JD and Nessa. I see that respect. I can look at some people in their marriage and see they still love and respect each other. But if God is not the foundation, it's not going to work. So really, yeah, you're just looking at the paperwork. <laughs> Those ceremonies, then when you go back to the Mosaic Law, somebody, a Mosaic Law, however you want to pronounce it, a lot of people, well, Moses said this, Moses said, well, who gave Moses the law? Because, yes, marriage was created, but divorce was also created. And there was rights why you do get divorced in good ways, and somebody don't even understand that. Because this is why you got so many women sitting up in the marriage right now letting their husband abuse them with scriptures, abusing them physically, mentally. 
and they are messed up and they will not leave. Now you got this joker going upside your head, about to kill you, and you talking about I can't divorce him because of my religion. You better get the hell out of religion. What, that's why I say what God put together, no man, no woman should be able to break it. But we allow folks to break it. We break it ourselves. So really, when you look at that in marriage, it is a covenant. Like I say, Adam and Eve didn't need no ceremony. You got people wasting all this money on these big time weddings and parties and everything. And then next thing you know, they divorce six, look like six, seven months later. Wasted money. And that's why you got to hook up with somebody that loves the Lord and is following God first. And like you say, Sister Lisa, back to that. Let me hit on it for a little bit. Yeah, this being single got very good advantages, but it's got a whole lot of bad advantages. Like you say, you ain't got nobody to hold yet now. You ain't got to show the crowd. Most of the time, you got to pat yourself on your own back and encourage yourself. And then finance-wise. But see... What's sad, Sister Lisa, when you look at people that's married, how many people you know, they married, but they separated? They married, but they stay in separate rooms. They married, but this is my money, your money. You go get your own money. I'm not going to help my husband. No, I'm not going to help my wife. She need to do this. She need to do that. That's what they call marriage now. And if that's what marriage want to want to be, I don't want no part of that either. I want my marriage to be under God. I want to help my wife. I want to love my wife. I want to take care of my wife, but I want my wife to be equal to me. And if that's not how it's going to be, I would rather stay single the rest of my life also because I don't need no dead weight. I was just talking about that in the other video about uh, being unequally yoked. That, that, that goes with everything you do in life. That ain't just tied in with marriage. And if you notice very closely, it never said nothing about marriage. You can be unequally yoked with, with your best friend. So, with that being said, sister, I love that video. That's why I wanted to come at it from that other angle about what God put together and how what we see mankind do. And those ceremonies, like I say, those parties, even at the wedding of Cana, you know, they had the parties and celebrated. But God wasn't, wasn't worried about no party, no ceremony. God wanted that relationship between him, you, and your wife. And that was very important. That's why I like to say a promise. I like to say a covenant goes way deeper than a promise because we break promises. But show me one time anywhere in the Bible where God broke a covenant. He never did. He gave it to Abraham. Wasn't Abraham blessed? Abraham wasn't always obedient. He gave whatever he said it was going to happen. He did it. Because God don't go back on his word, but we do. You know why he don't go back on his word? Because he said in his word that he would destroy the heavens and the earth before he before he go back on his own word. So if people will really take marriage very seriously, and you got people married that won't even come home at night. See, if you're going to do all of that stuff knowing you wasn't made for marriage, why even get married? But some people getting together just because of the benefits. Some people getting together just because tax purposes. I'm just being real, people. So, yes, God created that covenant. Adam knew his wife. He didn't even have to have no ceremony because God put them together. How many of us can say God put us together? I can, I can look at J.D. and Ness and say God put them together. He did. Now, if you want to go and, you know, do it all the way and get, get, you, get married, you know, Get married, but I'm not saying don't get married. I'm just coming from another angle to let you know why a lot of people do shack up. Because a question was asked to me about sex before marriage. And, I, and when it comes to sex before marriage, I can pretty much say most of us failed on that. Most of us know we failed on that more than one time. Everybody getting, everybody having sex before marriage. And when you when you look at when you look at the scripture real closely, when you look at sex before marriage, you pretty much lay with your wife. I know people don't want to say, they don't want to say amen on that. So, fellas, that woman that you call that, that, that hoe, the one you always down, and you laid with her too. So, in other words, she, she's like your wife. Everybody you laid down with, fellas, think about that for a moment in this video if you're looking at this. I'm trying to show you the way God looks at us and how God don't play a part of sin, but we're trying to make him play a part of sin. Everybody that you ever slept with in your whole entire life, think about that for a moment. Just think about it. Women also, some of us can't count. We need another set of hands. Oh, I done lost count after the first after the first five. You got to go back all the way back in your mind and be like, woo, but that's how powerful it is when God makes that covenant. 
He told Adam, this is your wife. He didn't have no choice to pick this other person, pick that person. He knew his wife. He knew his wife. Some people are cut out for marriage, some not. We can see that in the Bible. Some truly loved each other, some didn't. When, when you look at the long run, when you start trying to have more than one woman, fellas, well, I always go back to your boy Solomon. He had problems. Go back to David when he had problems, like father, like son, in so many ways, but not all the way. So, yes, God, God ordained marriage, he, but God focused on that covenant. He wants that relationship. That's why marriage, that, that covenant, was designed before, the, before you start looking at all these church buildings. Why? Because family is important. Why? Because that's what comes, God is the foundation, and that's what comes first, and that's what he designed, charity, love. We don't see this no more. You got more people trying to take care of the church building, but they not taking care of their own home. You got a lot of people that's married, but they are messed up with their finances. You got some woman following the preacher, listening at the preacher, and not listening at, her, listening at God and her own husband, if her husband is right. And a lot of people are putting their pastor in their business, and they need to stop that mess. That's another reason why people can't stay together. Your pastor don't go home and sleep with you at night. Your pastor ain't the one paying your bills. Your pastor got his own problems, and nine times out of ten, your pastor probably got more problems than you do. That's why the Bible said if a man can't run his own home, he ain't got no business being in the pulpit trying to run church. Deacons either. I don't care what leadership position you in. You can't run your own home. You need to sit down. Get mad at me all you want, but it's in the word of God. You don't need no jacked up people in leadership. We got enough of that going on. So God created that covenant. He created that covenant. He put you together. He put you together. You got a lot of people that done got married. They done had the big wedding, the big ceremonies, the bachelor parties, and they ain't even together no more. That's why you put your all in all into it. And I want you to sit back in this video and say, did I really put my all into it? Or did I just put some of my, put some of it into it? Husbands, if you're looking at this video, are you pushing to the hardest? Or are you just sitting back and done got lazy and sorry? Have you really, truly put your all into it? Or you gave up because you really didn't want to be married in the first place? You really didn't want to be married in the first place. So Sister Lisa, Love you from the bottom of my heart. I just wanted to come and respond back to you from another kind of angle about, I like, because I like your old video when you said, what is marriage? It wasn't like you didn't know what it was. I caught what you were saying in that video because a lot of people sitting up married right now saying, man, what is, what, really, what is marriage? And you got people that's shacking up doing better than people that's married. It look like it. But I ain't going to say look like it because they really do, some of them really do love each other. That's why I said in the other video, I know unbelievers that don't even believe in God, but they ain't nothing, They ain't bad people. They're very intelligent. They're very, very respectful. They're they un, they just unbelievers, but they treat their wives or their husbands better than the ones that are supposed to be Christ-like. With that being said, let me go on and end on this. Y'all have a beautiful and blessed day. Peace and deuces. Big Mike, there, there it is. Y'all stay blessed.